out for a little evening ride. It's very pretty. I have just installed a Tutoro auto chain oiler. Uh, I had several recommendations for the Tutoro one over the Scott oiler, and I had a look into them both. Um, obviously, we've got a Scott oiler on Mrs. 480's ER6, and uh, it works really well. I like the idea of them. Um, now I know how, how good they work, I'm uh, very open to having them. So, uh, yeah, the Chitoro one, the advantage of the Chitoro one over the Scott Oiler is it doesn't need a vacuum uh, bit plugging into uh, the engine to get the vacuum, or the electronic bits connecting up to the battery to uh, control the pump. Uh, the Chitoro one is fully analogue and completely independent of uh, the bike's, well, everything. Electrical and uh, oh, oh, there's a new skate park being built. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna have to get my board out and try it when it's open. Sorry, distracted by skate parks. Um, I'm far too old for skateboarding. Although, then again, Tony Hawk is still uh, doing a bit of skateboarding and he's like 50 something. Um, and I'm not that old. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yeah! So I've just got it all fixed in and connected up. It's just priming at the minute. So we've got the little magnet on top here. Oh, that's not going to help things. That might make things a bit awkward there if it keeps clipping to the frame when we need to prime it. Uh, but yeah, that's on top there. It's priming at the minute. The oil is making its way down the tube. Uh, here we go. Oh, I see. Ah, here we go. There we go. It's just starting to seep out now onto the sprocket so we can take the magnet off and turn this back down one two three four right that's currently off so the reason I've gone for a Tutoro one rather than a Scott oiler is uh, the installation of these is a lot easier. Uh, with the Scott oiler, if you're using the standard one, you have to hook it up to the engine somewhere to get a vacuum uh, from the engine's vacuum. Uh, with these, it doesn't need any of that. It doesn't need any electronic hookup or anything. It's all um, analog, if you like. So basically how it works, you've got the reservoir here uh, and then the flow control here. You set the flow control to what you need. Obviously that's gonna need a little bit of um, tweaking just to find out what the best flow rate is depending on uh, your riding situation, uh, time of year, etc, weather, because they recommend increasing it a little bit for when it's raining. Um, so I am just going to turn it by one, oh wrong way, <laughs> anti-clockwise by one and we'll uh, go for a test ride in a bit and see how that, uh, see how that does. Uh, but yeah you've got the uh, flow control there and then yeah the hose as you would on a scott oiler or whatever feeding down to uh, the nozzle on the sprocket on the rear sprocket and now because this isn't, isn't vacuum or electronically operated it's got a little valve inside here which actually from road movement it bounces up and down just a little bit just to trickle a tiny bit of oil through and it's regulated by the flow control so it doesn't matter how bumpy the road is it's never going to push through more than what this is set to because this is done off movement on the road it only puts oil through when you're in motion when you stopped and parked nothing It'll, it closes this is the deluxe kit which comes with the twin uh oh you see that it's a uh, twin nozzle so it puts oil on either side of the sprocket as far as I can tell, uh, between this and the Scott Oiler, this has a smaller reservoir capacity. I think this is only 100 millilitres and the Scott Oiler is 150, something like that. I'll put the right numbers up on the screen if I can find them. Another reason I've gone for this is because I know it fits in here and these things are best mounted in a vertical position. Um, on the ER6, the Scott Oiler is uh, un under the seat, but it's at uh, quite an angle, so you don't actually make the most of the reservoir's capacity, so you do have to keep a close eye on it to keep topping it up. Whereas this is gonna be vertical. It's external, it's easy to see. Um, so yeah, I know when it needs topping up. And with this kit, you do get a little a little top-up bowl. So I could fill that up and I could probably fit that under my seat. Yeah, I could, I could fit that under my seat somewhere. Um, so yeah, if I'm out and about and I notice it's uh, getting a bit too low, I can just 
refill it with some of this. Uh, you do get 500 mil of this stuff with it, so uh, that should last for quite some time. It looks, it looks identical to the Scott Oil stuff. It's blue. I'm sure it's probably very similar stuff. Um, they are obviously I only recommend using their own stuff, but I reckon if you've already got Scott Oil like I have, I've got a couple of uh, refill bottles of Scott Oil. I reckon I could just use that in this and it'll be absolutely fine. But for now, we'll use the Chitoro stuff and see how it goes. But briefly, just to show you the uh, the routing. So you've got uh, the little bracket here, cable tied down. There's a bit of uh, like neoprene foam stuff under there just to sort of give it some grip and obviously stop it damaging the paintwork of the frame. The hose I've ran from here behind the frame. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, if I'll get the camera around there. It's going to be cable ties in the way. Uh, there is a little uh, hose clip that you get with it one mounted behind it there the hose comes down behind the heel guard here there's a bit of excess hose there to allow for suspension movement of course uh, and then it comes out here another clip there and then just running it along the swing arm to the uh, th this thing's quite quite a decent thing to have it's the uh, they call it the helix connector uh, it's got this metal spiral around it so you can bend it to the shape you need and it stays in that shape so that's how I've got it installed. I'm just going to clip these cable ties off and Vols and I'm definitely happy with it. We'll uh, take it for a little ride around and see what, uh, see what the lubrication looks like. Two weeks later. Okay, it's been about two weeks since I fitted the Chitoro chain oiler. Everything's all looking good. Uh, I've got the flow control about right. Uh, before I was getting a lot of uh, fling on the back wheel uh, and it was, yeah, it was disgusting. Uh, but I've uh, fine-tuned it now, turned it down a bit, and now it's good. There's not much fling coming onto the back wheel, uh, but the chain is still getting lubricated nicely. What I should have done was clean the chain first before fitting it, so some of that muck on there is still from before, which is, yeah, not very good of me, but that's how it is. Uh, so yeah, I think we've done about three or 400 miles since fitting it, and uh, the level has only gone down a little bit, so this should last for quite some time, which is gonna be good. I'll keep you all posted on that, but uh, yeah, overall, it's definitely a thumbs up for the Tutoro chain oiler.